Hello, everyone. My name is Phyllis Jacker Philip. I co curated the exhibition Hidden Stories Books Along the Silk Roads together with Susie Cockburn Akbar. Today, I have invited Professor Jonathan Bloom to talk about the so called Blue Quran and its origin and production. My first question about this enigmatic manuscript How was this now dispersed manuscript produced and where? There are many discussions about its origin. Thank you, Phyllis. The first thing one should say is it's the most recognizable manuscript out there of, uh, of the Quran because it, you don't need to know Arabic, you don't need to know anything, and you can see it, and it's, it's so remarkable for its blue background and gold lettering, gold writing. It appeared, to modern knowledge, around the turn of the last century when a collector acquired some leaves, he said, in Constantinople, now Istanbul. Uh, and he thought that it had come from Iran, from Persia, but later research has suggested that it actually was produced in North Africa, in what is now modern Tunisia, sometime in the medieval period. One of the reasons for that is that the bulk of the manuscript actually survives in, in Tunisia, in Tunisian libraries. And so it's thought that, it, that sort of having the most of it suggests that it had most to do with that place. Some people have said it was uh, made in the 800s. Some people have said it's made in the 900s. No one knows exactly for sure. My feeling is that it probably was made in the middle of the 900s in what is now modern Tunisia. In a very splendid fashion, it had seven volumes that were kept together in a wooden box. It must have had about 600 or more leave, separate leaves that were kept together, produced, I believe, uh, under the patronage of the Fatimid rulers of Egypt. They founded the city of Cairo in 969 and ruled until 1171. Uh, I think that the Blue Quran was made in North Africa before they moved to Egypt. So it was quite a splendid and very expensive affair. In Tunisia, were they in a university library or in a mosque? They, they were in a mosque. It is thought. There is a, a catalog a, 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 of the contents of the library of the Great Mosque of Kairouan in Tunisia, written around, um, I think around 1300, that mentions a dark colored manuscript written in gold and silver that was kept in this box. And that's the only mention we have of a, of a manuscript like this. And so it suggests that most of it was in the mosque library until the 20th century, when the um, pages in Tunisia were largely taken to the capital, to the museum and the library in Tunis. I think one group, one set of pages may have been taken in the 16th century um, when in the 1500s, the Ottomans conquered Tunisia and may have taken this as a gift or been given it as a gift and taken it to the capital of the Ottoman Empire in Istanbul. They were bound in, in seven volumes and all of the pages that we think came through Istanbul were from the first of those volumes, which had the early, the early chapters in the Quran. And now we absolutely know it's an indigo diet. Would you like to talk about the origin and the production, the process of producing? Sure. When I first looked at this manuscript, which was close to 40 years or maybe 40 years ago, we always assumed that it was, was parchment that had been dyed blue with indigo, a vegetable dye made from plants. And it e can either come from indigo, which is grown in India, or from woad, which is uh, available in Europe and the Mediterranean world. A conservator explained to me that you cannot dye parchment because it, it, parchment is made from animal skin that's been stretched and dried. And if you wet it to dye it, then it shrinks and gets all wrinkly. So you have to color it in a different way. And basically you try, you're, you're putting the color on the surface so what we imagine is indigo was rubbed on the surface to give a very deep, the very deep blue color. Uh, once that is done, 
then the writing had to be done. And originally we thought it was written with gold ink, which would be made by grinding up gold to a very, very, very fine powder and then mixing it with a medium like um, gum Arabic or something to make it flow. But it turns out that under a microscope, if you look at the, the letters, you can see that they're not painted on, but they're made of gold leaf, which is extremely thin gold. And then you, what you do is you write in a transparent medium, something like glue or egg white, you do the calligraphy, and then you put this very thin gold on, and it only sticks where the writing has been. And then you use a soft brush or blow on it, and it blows away all the excess gold. So you have the writing left there, but the edges of the writing can are often rough. So the calligrapher had to go over every single letter and outline all the letters in dark ink to sharpen the edges. So it was a lot of work. Yes, it uh, it's really sounds enormously time consuming. I, I can imagine it, it must be very expensive and it is not something that you could find uh, very easily in the market that much. <laughs> I think it was a special commission. And the Wonderful. I thank you so much. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you.